Okay, so now the question is where? Where is this cannon going to hit the high point? When it shoots from low and goes to high, where is it going to hit? What do we know? We know the change in y. It is positive the height that you measure. It's going up, so up is positive. The, the lab we did last week, or for lab number two, it went down, so h was negative because down is negative. For part a of this lab, delta y was zero because it didn't go up or down. It landed on a level playing field. But for this part, for part b, it's going up. It's shooting from down low to up high, so it's got to shoot up. So delta y has to be positive h, and you have to measure it. You have to measure it precisely. The question is, what is delta x? The acceleration in the y direction is still negative g. And theta, you've measured it. Depends on how high you stack your books and how the angle of your cannon. And the initial velocity, you measured in part a. So you know all of this. The only thing we don't know is delta x. We're going to start this the exact same way we've started all these problems. You work with your x pieces, and then you work with your y pieces. By the way, on your homework problems, and on the test, and on your quizzes, you're going to be doing a ton of these kind of problems. And they all start the same way. The x dimension always going to start with this equation. Because there's no acceleration, this is the only equation you can use. In the y direction, you do have acceleration. So you have three equations to choose from. This one is going to be the best one most of the time. So we're going to work this out just like we've already done a stack of times. Solve it for t. I'm not going to step through that. You've already seen it about three times now. This one, we're going to start with this equation. Everything's going to be the same, except instead of having 0 for my delta y, like we did last time, I'm going to have positive h. OK? So now I'm going to solve this equation. <sighs> Wait a second. To solve this equation, you should notice we're trying to find delta x. So to get delta x, I see it here, and I see it again here, this time with a square. Oh. And I, since I don't have a zero here, one of them is not going to cancel out. That means we're going to fall back, just like we did last week, to this quadratic equation. So let me write this out. I'm going to uh, take that sine and cosine and uh, turn that into a tangent, because that's a sine divided by a cosine, and so that is tangent. And I'm going to take everything and move it to the left-hand side, so this becomes negative tangent, and this becomes positive g over 2, all that stuff. So let me write it up here. So this is going to be positive g over 2 uh, divided by v naught squared cos squared theta, and then I'm still going to have my delta x squared there. That's positive because I had to add it to the other side because of this negative here. Now this sine over cosine times delta x is tangent of delta x and is positive on this side, which means I'm going to have to subtract it over there, so it's going to be minus tangent of theta times delta x. And my h, that's still over here on the left side, so that's going to be plus h. And I've taken everything off the right side, so it's zero on the right side. Okay, so now this piece here, this is my a, this piece here, this is my b, and this piece here, this is my c. Okay? So I plug it all into the quadratic equation, just like we did last time. This piece here, it goes negative b, plus or minus, so starting here, negative b, so this is already negative, so it becomes tangent, positive tangent, theta, plus or minus, square root of b squared, negative tangent squared, becomes positive tangent squared, minus 4 times a, that's all this, g over 2 v naught squared cos squared theta times c, which is h, positive h. This is all divided by 2 times a, so this is 2g divided by 2 v naught squared cos squared theta. And you see there's a little bit of things we can cancel out here. This 4 and this 2 leaving with the 2 upstairs, this 2 and this 2 go away. And that's about it. But this is great because this equals delta x. And the big question is, is it the plus sign or is it the minus sign that gives it the answer? 
And the answer is, on this problem, both. So that's how you do the math.